just a very quick follow-up film from one yesterday. I spent the day making a new fly cutter the correct way around this time and it's basically the same as the other one just the mirror image. I used the bigger uh, socket head screws to hold it in just because those little grub screws they take such a small allen key and they always sort of strip out in the middle if you, especially if you're trying to put any sort of force on them so using these cap head screws gives me a little bit more mass here to balance out the bits I've taken off and um, means you can use a, a much beefier allen key to tighten these up which is good I've played around a little bit with how to do the how to grind the tool I'm still playing with that a bit uh, the main thing though is I have this cutting really well now but it took a lot of playing around so yesterday what I found with the other fly cutter um, which in the end I didn't feel comfortable using because this collet is held in with a threaded bar and it occurred to me if you're running the tool in reverse that that bar is going to be trying to unscrew itself uh, which probably isn't very safe if that happens that could come loose and then the whole collet could drop down which wouldn't be good so I'm not going to use the other one at all uh, this one of course being the right way around you run it in the forward direction normal direction but yesterday when I was playing with the other one and then even after I'd finished this one and I was doing some test cuts with it what I was finding is if you cut moving the work this way um, I can never remember which one's X positive and Y positive and that sort of thing. Um, if you're cutting that direction, it would give you a nice smooth cut on one side only. When you came back the other way, it would cut going this way. And then when the back of the tool was coming around, the back of the tool was cutting. Um, or rather, the, the back edge of the cutter was cutting on the way back. And I found the same thing was happening if you went forwards and backwards. So in one direction it made a, a, a single clean cut, in the other direction it made two cuts. And I was looking up online what this means, and basically it means the, the tramming of your mill isn't out. So the, the beds are not completely perpendicular to the spindle. So um, I spent a lot of time this afternoon just re-tramming the mill. So I took the vise off, I cleaned everything up to make sure there were no bits and pieces upsetting any readings. Um, I checked it with a dial indicator on a, on a rotating arm and it was kind of off a couple of thou over, I think it was like a six inch arm, so a 12 inch diameter. Um, what I did to actually set the tramming in the end though, which on this mill it's a little bit of a pain. The, the base is bolted uh, to the column, or rather the column's bolted to the base with these four giant bolts. Uh, there's two on the other side. And to set the tram, you, you basically just have to put shims underneath here. And I had it set up fairly close, but the, the fly cutter was showing me that I was it was still off. And it was close enough that I could actually make a pass and just sort of push on the machine. I didn't have to push that hard. And I could change the pattern of the cut. Uh, and when this is cutting properly, you should end up with a sort of crosshatch pattern. Because as the cutter goes forwards, it takes cuts going this direction. And there's sort of grooves that it's cutting, I guess. So if the machine's completely level, when, when you get to the... When the back of the cutter gets onto the work, it should just be hitting the tops... Off those grooves that it cut going on the front edge and you end up with this kind of crosshatch pattern so in the end all I really ended up doing was making test cuts figuring out which direction I had to push the column on the machine to get this crosshatch pattern and then I loosened the bolts and I started putting shims in the appropriate place so if I had to push the machine backwards I knew I needed shims at the front it actually turned out to be the other way around. I, I had to pull the column towards me, which meant the back of it needed to be lifted up, so I put some shims at the back. And same for the left to right. And it took me quite a few goes, uh, just adding a couple of thou shim each time. 
and unbolting it, bolting it all down hard. But I finally got to the point where I can cut either direction. Uh, so um, X and Y, and it leaves me this crosshatch pattern on the piece. So I think that means it is now all cut in correctly and everything's level and flat. Um, I still haven't played around with just checking that what the the DRO tells me. So if I make a what it's saying is a Z axis two thou cut here, will it really be two thou smaller the piece of material? So now that I've got this cutting nice and flat, I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to uh, fly cut the other side, I'll take a measurement off it uh, with the micrometers and then I'll put it back in and try taking off 2000 and see how close I get to that number. The um, It's good though, it's it's actually working pretty well. Uh, the cutter seems fine, it's I think going to the 20mm diameter shaft was a good idea, it just makes it all more rigid. And um, I still need to play around with speeds and feeds and uh, tool grinding. Uh, somebody did mention in the comments about having a slight radius on the on the nose of the tool, and I've done that, and that definitely helps as well. Apparently, one of the reasons why that helps is so that when it's coming around and it's cutting these grooves, the more radius you have, um, the more flattened out the grooves are. They're kind of like waves. Whereas if you've got a sharp tool, you end up with sort of peaks, I guess. So there's lots of playing around that can be done there.